Dr. Duncan Ross is the founder and CEO of Chimera Labs, where his work is focused on the advancement of the exosome industry through research and development, clinical investigation, and support of healthcare providers. His research has been and continues to be employed by many physicians and clinics in a variety of regenerative medicine protocols. And with that, let me start the interview. Dr. Ross, you are the CEO and founder of Chimera Labs. So welcome to Modern Health Span. It's a pleasure to have you on our channel today. Thank you so much. Thanks for inviting me. So, thank you. So Dr. Ross, could you provide some background on yourself and how you got involved with exosomes and why you uh, set Chimera Labs up? Okay, well, I mean, I had been planning on medicine or science for my pretty much my entire life. I studied microbiology and immunology in college. But then later, my father uh, came down with acute myeloid leukemia. So I joined the graduate program at the University of Miami, specifically to work on that. Um, so I ended up going through a biochemistry degree as well as an immunology degree program. And um, it was I think it was the coordination of those two things, being able to separate proteins, while also being able to perform cellular therapies, such as what a bone marrow transplant is. Um, were two very different skills. Uh, but when I came out, uh, there, were, there had been, as I'm sure you're aware, a, um, a, a great increase in the use of your own stem cells, your mesenchymal stem cells for the treatment of many inflammatory diseases. I don't remember people really talking about anti-aging at that time, but most people did know that there was a therapeutic side to um, mesenchymal stem cells. Um, so I, I, I started working in that business by, by taking your autologous fat and isolating it for the physicians. And then the physicians would apply it to different diseases. And I saw, I was noticing a much greater outcome for the younger patients, you know, it was much easier to treat those patients with their own cells. So that led me to the start to think about what the difference between a young cell versus an old cell was. And as I started to expand cells, I could clearly see that the young cells were more potent, um, so as I did research, you could see that there had been studies done where you look at the secretory output of a 40-year-old mesenchymal stem cell versus the secretory output of a 20-year-old. And the 20-year-old or the, the embryo has much greater secretion of proteins involved in growth, which is not difficult to understand. I mean, we do need to grow, uh, but we need to stop growing. So it was at that time that I decided, well, I'm going to start uh, working with the youngest cells possible, which as far as I'm concerned, the youngest ethically available cells are placental stem cells because the baby has already been born. Um, now, you could probably argue that fetal stem cells would be more potent, but then we're getting into ethical controversy. So I felt that we were going to get a good enough effect with the young cells uh, to see these therapeutic effects. Um, in The problem is I know very well from bone marrow transplantation that by giving my cells to you, like say in the form of a kidney, that kidney is going to be rejected. So how are we going to get the same efficacy of stem cell therapies and the youth behind that uh, without having this potentially dangerous graft versus host disease that could reject those cells? And the way to do that is to just use the secretions of the stem cells. So the, the way to think about it is if the stem cell is the olive, then the secretions, the oil, the olive oil is what the exosomes are. And they're that in more ways than one. They have a lipid bilayer. They would, if you had a high enough concentration of them, they would feel oily. Um, in the concentrations we use, they're very low. But so they're suspended in saline. So you wouldn't be able to tell that. But it's obviously a lot easier to ship olive oil around than it is to ship olives. You know, the olives would be going bad, et cetera. So it's the same exact analogy with cells. And that's what an exosome is. It's the signaling component, the proteins and ribonucleic acids that are associated with the cell and what the cell does well. Um, and it's very small virus sized component that is easily sterile filtered. So it's much safer than using a cell um, and can be transported in, in less stringent conditions. You introduced Chimera Labs. What does Chimera Labs do? Well, since 2014, when I recognized this ability of exosomes uh, versus cells, I slowly weaned myself off of cells and began solely using the exosome component 
and I was seeing comparable, if not better outcomes. Uh, for instance, um, the, one of the first diseases we worked on was COPD. And by simply um, nasally inhaling the exosomes, um, you were starting, you could see a, a, a close to the same response as giving intravenous uh, cell ulular therapy. So a nebulizer works, was working just as well, if not better than an entire IV administration of cells that I took from your body, et cetera, which was being very highly used in, in the mid around 2015. Um, so that's where that came from. So Camara Labs is now a 27,000 square foot lab with 40 employees. Uh, we have just finished refiling our first FDA application for the use of exosomes in post COVID um, long hauler type syndrome. And, um, and things are going quite well. Uh, we have four clean rooms uh, and we're growing every day. But uh, the applications of the exosomes are very wide from anti-inflammatory usage to, like I said, um, anti-aging. And, and why the anti-aging? Let me just answer that quickly. So in those 300 proteins that we could talk about that an exosome secretes, Many of those proteins are solely responsible for opening DNA such that genes can be expressed. So you have your anti-inflammatory component and you have what's called a histone deacetylase uh, protein or an acetyltransferase protein. They're called HATS and ACTS. So by adding a methyl group or removing a methyl group from certain proteins, you can cause the expression of uh, the gene you're looking for. And if that gene is something like IGF-1 or some kind of protein that instantiates growth, epidermal growth factor, um, hepatocyte growth factor, these things will cause your cells to grow. So these exosomes have two components, an anti-inflammatory component and a pro-growth component. Um, and that's what's really exciting about young exosomes. They, they contain messenger RNA, right? And the protein. Right. So I, is is are they producing the protein themselves or are they uh, causing the cell to produce the protein? It's both. Um, however, they are much more like a Moderna vaccine than they are a protein carrier. The, the most important component is that they carry their own messenger RNA and express their own proteins. They carry some protein. And so we do see a biphasic response. But I'd say that if the response from the protein is this at the very beginning within 15 minutes, then the response from the messenger RNA is this over a period of a week to two weeks. Um, so, but uh, comparing it to a Moderna vaccine is, is not a bad choice because if the Moderna vaccine is this size, it's 30 nanometers with messenger RNA in it, solely messenger RNA. The exosome is 100 nanometers with messenger RNA, but also with protein. So you get a little bit more bang for your buck. So we, we, we talked a little bit about exosomes. What, what are they used for generally in the body? I mean, the body produces lots of exosomes, I believe, of different sorts. Uh, right. And so what, what are they used for kind of naturally? Well, even two things. Even plant cells secrete exosomes. So every cell secretes exosomes. And in the past, they had thought, been thought about solely as the trash can of the cell. But the cell does have mechanisms to break down trash on its own. It doesn't really need to send it out to the garbage. Um, but there is a component of that. And it depends on, on the cell type. A cancer cell is using exosomes, which is the danger here. If you tell a patient about exosomes, they go start Googling it. And then they find that you know a cancer cell secretes exosomes, not understanding that every cell secretes exosomes. So one of the reasons that metastasis occurs is because cancer cells are secreting exosomes. Uh, does a fibroblast really secrete that many exosomes? Probably a little bit, but a mesenchymal stem cell, and that's why we, we focus on this cell. And by the way, um, Wake Forest University focuses on the same cell is because I look at an MSC as not having another function. A fibroblast has a function as a skin cell. A tubular epithelial cell from a kidney has another function. Um, MSCs are solely there in my mind to control the cells around it and the growth of the cells around it. So it's secreting more of the type of exosomes that we're looking for, which are these anti-inflammatory growth causing exosomes. 